welcome back to my channel if you're new here which you will be my name is Bree. don't forget to like comment share subscribe all of that good stuff and also hit the notification bell before you reach the end of this video so today as you can tell by the title i'm gonna be open and honest about why i stopped baking i've stopped baking guys if you didn't already know it, probably you didn't know but anyways i had a baking business cake baking business whatever where i was making like birthday cakes celebration cakes whatever whatever cupcakes yeah as you can tell it just wasn't it like it just wasn't it so basically child baking like yeah it just put me through a different type of stress like i can't even explain the stress that i went through with baking and i've been doing hair for a while now and the amount of mistakes and money i've spent and wasted and it didn't even bring me to that level of stress i can't even yeah it's just too much if you didn't see my previous video please go and watch it but i did also put some pictures and my instagram in there where you can just see what type of cakes i've done i was a beginner baker so i wasn't this type of expert i was just seeing where my bacon talent would take me so if you didn't see them i'm going to insert them here But anyway, a little bit of a backstory. So if you didn't know, I'm a kind of a DIY girl. Like I do everything myself. I don't know why. Sometimes I'm just being tight. Sometimes I'm just being lazy or I just can't put my trust into someone else to deliver something for me. Like who's going to deliver something better for myself than I am? Like I'll wait. <laughs> so anyway, obviously, if you didn't know, I'm a mother of two. So I have a two year old and a four year old. And every time it was their birthdays, I was just thinking, who's going to make them a birthday cake? Like, my mum used to make cakes. She also stopped because it was stressful. So it's not just me. But I was just thinking, who's going to make my cake? So I decided to go on YouTube and kind of just quickly learn. And also pick up a few things that I've witnessed my mum do in the kitchen. She didn't tell me because she's one of those mums, like, get out of my kitchen. I feel like I'm going to be like that, but I'm trying not to be. So I took all of that wisdom, remixed it, went on YouTube, watched a few cake videos and just done what I needed to do for my kids' birthday parties because I thought there's no way I'm spending however much on a birthday cake for my kids' birthdays that they're not even going to remember. Like, they're just going to see a picture and be like, oh, that was cute. Like, they're not going to be excited as I was on that day. Well, they are, but they're just not going to remember it. So anyway, that's how I kind of got into baking. I always said like I would never bake. I like chefing it up like I'm a chef. I like cooking. I feel like it's just more, you just get more room to freestyle. Like if I'm cooking, I can just chuck in seasonings. I don't have to measure nothing. I can just chuck in whatever and all put it together and it's cool. But with baking, I feel like there's so much restrictions. If you forget one ingredient, it can fuck up your whole cake. Or if you just get the measurement wrong or you time it wrong, it can mess you over. Like literally, it's not for the week. And that's not my style of cooking. I like just remixing and taking risks and seeing how the flavours come out. And they always pop. So it's not even a thing like that. But cakes, girl, there was so many times where cakes tested me. I never knew I could be tested so much for a cake. <laughs> like... Not even motherhood testing me like that. I don't under... Ugh. I can't even... I don't even know where to start. So there was like times where I would make a cake. And again, like I said, if you forget an ingredient, it's just a write-off. So I would make a cake and, for example, forget the eggs. And it's like, bruh, how's the cake going to rise with no eggs? And I've already put it in the oven. And it's. I just know it's not going to come out right. So I'll just take it out while it's not even finished cooking. And I would have to restart that cake again when the cake's due tomorrow. Like, bro, the cake is due tomorrow and it's 10 o'clock at night and I need to restart the cake again. <laughs> There's been so many stories. Another time where basically I didn't have the space. I've got a really tiny kitchen. That's another reason why I stopped doing cakes. The kitchen is so tiny. I'm so grateful for my kitchen. I can't even complain. 
but to be doing cakes in this tiny kitchen like there's no storage space there's no way to put your big ass cake tins like, they take up a huge amount of space and all the decorations and sprinkles and ingredients like flour sugar there's just so much that goes into making cakes so that was another issue I had. I didn't really have enough storage space. So it's literally, I'm in my kitchen and everything's just on top of me. I just feel suffocated. Like there's just too much going on. So that was another thing. And because of that, I couldn't get a stand mixer where it would fit nicely in my kitchen because I literally had no, you see the surface space in your kitchen. There was nowhere for me to put a stand mixer. Those things are huge and heavy. So I was using those little hand mixers like, so this, this, this little thing is what I was using to make these big ass three tier, two tier cakes, like this. And I'm so grateful for it because it's taken me so far. But girl, people that are bakers are using these bad boy stand mixers and I'm using this. Like, do you know how much? Yeah, it's just too much. But basically, as I was saying, I was using those little stand mixers and I, that's my third one, by the way third one in the space of like a year less than a year because when you're making cakes you're making a big amount of batter and like also the buttercream is so thick and dense so to be using those little mixers it's not enough to be mixing the whole mixture it takes a lot of strength so three times that's my third one they broke on me while i was mid doing a cake at like probably 11 p.m so 11 p.m the stand mixer will decide to break and I have the cake due tomorrow in the afternoon. So what does your girl have to do? I need to step outside, go to Tesco, pray that it's still open. Luckily it shuts at midnight. I have to bomb it down to Tesco and I have to go and buy another mixer and pray to God that one doesn't break as well. I have to continue doing the cake. The thing about me, yeah, some people will bake your cake like three, four days before, leave it in the fridge, decorate it. Like they'll do it in a space of probably like three, four days where that's not me. I like when I do cakes, I want my cake to be fresh. So you can taste the freshness like it's just been baked. I would literally bake it the morning before that is due, set it in the fridge and then decorate it at night time while the kids are sleeping. So then by the afternoon when the cake's due, like it will set good. It's had enough time to sit in the fridge and it's good. So I'm a little bit of a risk taker. I'm leaving it very last minute. So if anything goes wrong, it's peak. That's not my fault, really. That's literally my fault. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a silly way to do it. But I just feel like I would feel guilty to give a customer a cake that's been in my fridge for three days. I don't know. I'll just feel so guilty because I wouldn't even want that. So but anyway, if it works for you, it works for you. I'm just, yeah, that's how I roll when it comes to baking cakes. So that's another example. I've gone through three of those mixes and it just, yeah, that just set me off. There's another time where I was baking like a four layered cake. I was on the last layer of the cake because my oven is just a normal standard oven. I would have to bake like two layers at a time. So I would make half the mixture, put them into two cake tins, put it in the oven, cook that for at least probably like an hour or just under, just over. It depends on the size of the cake. There's so much to it. It's just, yeah. So I'd finish those two layers. Then I'll go back with the other half of the mixture, make it up, put it in the tins, put it into the oven to bake and finish that. And again, I'm doing this at like whatever time at night or morning, early morning. So I'm taking out the tins from the oven. So I've taken out two of them, they're cool. I'm taking out the other two. One tin is cool. Please tell me why the fourth tin decides to backflip and fall on the floor. Like, so now I've got cake on the floor and the cake is due tomorrow. So that means I need to go outside rush down to the 24-hour tesco get all the ingredients again make up the mixture again bake the cake again let it sit because it needs to cool down before you put it in the fridge there's all these different timings you need to consider so you need to let the cake cool down so i need to stay up now until the cake cools down first i've got to stay up until it cooks then i've got to stay up for the cake to cool down then I've got to take the cake out, put it in the fridge, let it sit for a bit before I can go around and start decorating the rest of the cake. So there was just so many setbacks, so many setbacks. And I just thought to myself, I can't be doing this. I've got my two kids running around because bearing in mind, if something goes wrong that day, that means I need to do everything that morning that is due. And bearing in mind, the kids might even wake up early because they can hear me rustling and bustling up this cake. So it could make them wake up early. So now I need to do all this while my kids are running around and arguing and screaming. And I'm trying to get the last little finishing touches on this cake. 
so yeah that is why i stopped making cakes long story short that is the reason i just couldn't do anymore the stress levels the emotions that go into it and at the end of the day in my eyes i just thought it's just for chicken change like literally it's literally just for chicken change is this stress worth me getting chicken change and people used to say your cakes are sick they taste so good bump up your prices people are still gonna pay for it but for me it's not even about the money anymore it's about the stress that it's causing on my body like it was so hard for me to actually say I'm quitting because I don't like quitting things. But then for me, I'm a thing where if something's not working for me or if it's damaging my mental health, like I need to let it go. No matter how much I feel like, oh, maybe I should ride it out a bit longer or people are giving me advice to keep going. And if I know for a fact that it's messing with my mental, yeah, it's not for me, bye-bye. Like it's not even worth keeping that around. And at the same time, I was doing cakes, I was doing a course, and I'm also doing hair, wigs and stuff at the same time. Not like I was just doing cakes, I was trying to juggle too many things at once and also being a full-time mother, as you know, like, it was just too much stress. So long story short, your girl is done with cakes. And when I finally said it out loud, I put a post on my Instagram like, yeah, I'm taking a break from the kitchen, but it's not a break, like, I'm finished. But when I done that, the relief, my body felt I was so relieved like if something is causing your mental get rid of it let it go like it's not worth it life is too short there's so many more things in life you could be doing things you actually want to be doing stick to that obviously there's certain circumstances where you can't just let go of things like that it might take time you might have to consider other things but for me I would always say if it's not for you just please just let it go it's not by force it's not that deep like there's other things in this life and that's not it. Like you don't deserve to be under so much stress. If it like, I'm not even gonna start telling you to quit your jobs, but if it gets to that and if it's ruining your mental state and you can feel it on your body and you know it's not good for you and it's not getting you anywhere, let it go. There's always better. There's more doors, more opportunities that will open for you. God will open them. You just have to have faith and just, yeah, go with what your heart's telling you to go with. Just to wrap this video up, again if you like my hair it's the same hair i've been wearing but i will leave the links in the description box for you down below don't forget to check it out also follow my instagram my personal and my business accounts show your girl some love and help me to build this community and get this channel up and running and again if you have any ideas anything you want me to talk about don't forget to leave it in the comment but yeah thank you for watching this video don't forget to like comment share subscribe all of the good stuff ciao